Um, this is the windows.media.editing uh, presentation. And this is a brand new API set we rolled out for Windows Phone Blue. Uh, my name is John Cerna. I was the program manager on the project. And I'm Jeff McGlynn. I am the developer on the project. And uh, what we're going to take you through today is essentially why we think it's an important feature for you to have, why this, why this API set is something that we think is pretty critical to have on the mobile platform and beyond. We'll be talking about that because it makes video and video apps better. We'll talk about the features and frameworks the API supports. Um, we're going to talk about the basic architecture, how we built it. If uh, there's anyone in the audience familiar with sort of the, the basic um, fundamentals of nonlinear editing, I'm going to be talking about that because it's very much rooted in that. Um, we're going to show you editing in action. I'm not going to hopefully not keep you waiting too long to actually see a full functioning editing app. Um, and this will be the first time you will see editing in public on a Windows Phone app anywhere in this room. So more people really should have showed up because it's kind of cool. Um, and so uh, the last thing we're going to do is Jeff is going to take you through a basic Tremor application line by line almost and show you just how easy it is. So an application that edits video creates more compelling content encourages sharing and puts innovation and creativity in the hands of the customer. So let me start with the first one, which I think is kind of critical. Um, video content is shared more often when it's shorter. One of the things that we understood when we did a survey of, and we first started this journey to do video editing, and we only worked on it for about a year before we actually got this platform up and running. Um, one of the things that we um, understood was that the average length of the video shared on the internet, like 90% of them is a minute or less. People like to share short form videos. That's because when they're in the moment and they're shooting with their camera um, on their phone, they might shoot five or six minutes, but they really, really want to cut it down to a shorter form that somebody's going to watch. Now, if I think about applications like Vine, where it's six seconds, Instagram, where it's about 15 to 16 seconds of actual video, people are really thinking about in the moment, quick sharing. So if I can't let you do that, if I can't make your content more compelling by cutting it down and putting it into a much more shareable format, then that's a problem. And it's a problem we've had on Windows Phone for a while because we basically we let you shoot video and then you had to take it off the phone to edit it. Well, that problem's over because now you can do that. The other reason why I think editing is so important, and it's one of the coolest features that we rolled out in this release, not just because I worked on it, um, but also because I think it puts innovation and creativity in the hands of your customers. If you have an application that captures video or you build an editing application up from scratch, basically what you're saying to your customer is, you know that stuff that you shot with your camera? You can make it way cooler than it is now. And you can do it right now on the phone that's in your hand. So when you let your customers edit video, they can share just the right moment. Now, that's my dog, Violet. And Violet was in the backyard, and she dug a hole. And she looked at that hole for a while. And I was there with my camera. And eventually, she stuck her head in the hole, which was a very cool thing for me to have a video of. It was also a very cool thing for her in general, because she had her head in the snow. Um, but I really, really wanted just those 20 seconds of her about to put her head in the snow and her head into the snow, right? Um, I didn't want to share a whole five minutes. How many times have you gone up to YouTube and said, watch this funny dog video or funny cat video, and you're waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting, and finally the thing happens. Or you'll see in the comments, you know, well, at about 420, it's a good thing. So I was able to get just the right moment. Also, I can share a story with more impact. Uh, there's Violet again, and that's my daughter, Hope. Uh, you'll see more of her later in actual video. So this is a birthday party. And she's unwrapping presents, and Violet comes up and licks her on the face. Um, so, you know, everything's better with music. So let's say I put a soundtrack under that before I share it. The editing APIs let you do that. They, and I'm going to show you how that's done. They let you actually soundtrack uh, rapidly underneath a, uh, a video when you write a video application. It's uh, called background, video, uh, background audio. And you can build and share a more complete story that's stronger than its parts. Um, this is what I like to call them. My videos are all in different places problem. It's like I've gone and I've, like, I've shot like 20 or 30 clips. They're all sitting in my camera roll or my video roll or whatever. And, or I, I, you know, I've, I've had multiple phones and I've got multiple videos. Well, even a very simple problem like just going to, say, vacation and you're in a couple of different locations on your vacation and you've shot three or four different videos, but you want to share something out to grandma or out to a relative or a friend, and you don't want to share six videos because you don't want to be that guy or that gal that like sends the email with 27 videos attached. Editing lets you then say, look, I can take the best 30 seconds or five seconds or 10 seconds from each of these videos, put them all together, and send them out as one video. What we call clip combine, the ability to take a bunch of media clips and combine them together. So 
in Windows Editing, we're going to give you the tools, and we're going to give you support for the following on the API set. Quickly building basic video trimming into any application. So one of the things we knew we had to do in the release, and it was our minimal goal, and we only had about a year to get this platform off the ground. Um, I think we got pretty far, which is kind of cool. We knew we had to at least be able to trim a video. We had to give you a very simple API set where you didn't have to drop down to Media Foundation and write 700 lines of code to set an endpoint and an outpoint to make a video shorter. And mission accomplished, we got that done. That's very cool. Um, we went a little bit farther in that we also added a uh, smart remux, and I'll talk about that for a little bit. Smart Remux is a, a hardware feature where we let you uh, take one clip, trim it down, and we send you over a hardware path where we're able to actually transcode without transcoding. We just, we just, go, to a, we just go to a scene point on the video, and that means that if I have like a 10-minute video and I trim it down to like 20 seconds, it transcodes in four seconds. Um, and I think Jeff's actually going to show you that later. Um, so we thought that was really cool because if I'm in the moment and I'm shooting like a five minute video and I, and I really, really, um, you guys got some awesome swag. Those bags are totally full. Yeah. Anyway, I'd give them a shout out for coming up to the front row. I appreciate that. Um, so uh, I get that down to that, those, to that perfect 20 seconds. I also don't want to wait five or 10 minutes for that thing to transcode out. So smart remuxing is really quite cool. Uh, it works only on a single clip. Um, because uh, it's taking advantage of the fact that it doesn't actually have to do a full transcode out. We also knew that you probably wanted to go farther than that. Now, even though we only had a year to do it, we knew we had to at least get as far as clip combining as well. So we had to let you be able to define in the API set individual clips. And once we let you define individual clips, we figured you were going to write a UI. And if you were going to write a UI, you probably wanted thumbnails because you were going to want a timeline. So there is thumbnail support inside the API. I apologize, by the way. I have a pretty bad cold. Uh, it's getting better every day. Um, my voice is usually not quite this hoarse. So stick with me. I plan to, I plan to make it through the entire hour. It should be fine. Uh, I've been drinking tea all morning. Um, so we also wanted to give you UI support for timelines uh, with thumbnail generation. So you could, you could build a really cool UI. And we also wanted to give you the ability to add background soundtracks. So we added the um, ability for you to be able to have an object called background audio that you can pin to the entire media composition. Um, don't worry about not knowing what that is right now. I'm going to take you through the entire architecture and show you some code samples. Um, and that would let you rapidly put music underneath. Now, we got to this point. We were pretty much done with the release. And we thought, well, you know what would have been great? It would have been great to have effects um, because filters are pretty important. And so rather than try to give you a library of effects right away, because we didn't have the time. We said, all right, we need to at least get as far as enabling them for you. So what we did was we worked kind of hard and long into the night, and we added extensibility. So what you do get in this first release of the APIs is the ability to add your own MFTs to your editing application and call them in. So that you can, if you roll your own filter, if you roll like a CP tone filter or a black and white filter or some other filter, or you can do an audio filter as well, um, on top of Media Foundation, uh, which is open on the phone now, and we'll talk about that at the very end, um, you can go ahead and bring it into the editing application and use it. We didn't want to block you on that. Um, it does mean dropping down and doing work on Media Foundation. Uh, long term, we don't want you to do that. We'd love you to be able to use this API set and never actually have to descend low into the stack. Um, but we knew at, at this stage of the game, we had, to, we had to at least open this up for you so you could bring this stuff in. Also, something to think about, you could be the MFT guy. You could be the guy who rolls a whole bunch of MFTs with people doing the editing applications. If everybody in this room goes out and builds an editing application, which is extremely easy if anyone's tried it in the challenge, um, you know that maybe you want to be the guy who supports all of those guys with a whole MFT li with a library of MFT filters. So that is also enabled through this. I want to talk about framework support um, and kind of where we landed. And this takes me to a little story about um, media stream source and one of the key features in, in editing. This is also sort of a, an explanation of the feature set that we have and how it lines up. We knew that we had to open the API set up for Silverlight uh, 8.1, but we can only open it up to a certain level because of a constraint we had around media stream source. I'm going to back up for a second. Windows XAML has a brand new media element that rolled out in Windows 8.1 and a brand new media stream source. They're awesome. They do, they do much more lifting and better work than the old Silverlight Media Stream source um, and the old Silverlight Media element. Um, in fact, because of that, we can offer you live preview on the APIs so that you can actually see what you're going to get before you actually commit to a file, which is great. 
The downside is, is that if you do use the APIs on Silverlight, you won't get live preview. Um, but that still doesn't mean you can't do basic trimming. In fact, it's encouraged if you've already got an app that captures video, adding the APIs are not closed to you. You can go ahead and access them. Um, you just won't be able to get the live preview working. So I really wanted to call it out and be really clear about that. Uh, we've got office hours, by the way, later on between 5.30 and 6.30, so if you want more details, if we don't have enough time in the questions to go into this, feel, come down to the office hours and we'll walk you guys through this. Um, but the key thing uh, is, is that you will get the smart trip climbing and you do get the smart remux. Now, when you do Windows XAML and JSA.1, you will get uh, real-time preview via the media stream source. So what this means is, is that when I've actually um, gone and combined myself uh, an actual number of clips together, I can see them. I can see them in real time on the screen, on the phone, and someday on a tablet, um, and at, before I actually commit to that. And this, in my mind, is really important because this is the heart of editing. If I can't give you preview in a complex editing situation, then I think I failed because you really kind of need to see what you're doing. If you've ever worked with any editing at all, you need to see what you're doing before you actually commit out to a file. You don't want to write to a file and then go, oh, I hated that and they go back and do everything. You want to see it all change in real time. And you're going to see that today, actually, um, as I play around with some stuff. Uh, we give you multi-clip combine, uh, thumbnail generation for UI, background soundtracks, and adding still images. That was a cool thing that we kind of got in um, with a lot of effort. Because I firmly believe that if you're in the moment and you're out there on vacation and you've shot a bunch of videos, you've probably shot a bunch of stills. And those stills should be available to you when editing your video. So if I've got some photos of my family, then it's like, oh, you know what? I don't have a video of that one time we were at the museum, but really I'd like to put that in the video to grandma. Well, go ahead and drop it in. Give it a duration and add it to your slideshow. Or just do a slideshow of a bunch of stills. Um, and then once again, we, we did extensibility. Uh, we let you go ahead and add effects through Media, found, uh, through Media Foundation transforms. All right, let's talk about the basic editing architecture. Um, I don't know if this is the coolest thing you'll see today, um, but I like it because I think it's very simple. One of our goals was to give you very, very, very simple objects that you would be manipulating in your code that reflected the real heart and soul of nonlinear editing. Now, I talk about nonlinear editing. I'm talking about how editing changed years ago when systems like Avid and, and things you may have heard about came into play, where I was literally able to say, you know what, all that video I shot, those are files. They're sitting on a hard drive somewhere. I never, ever, ever want to change those files. All I want to do is use them as a source. And I'm going to create new objects that are essentially property bags based on those files. That's kind of the core of nonlinear editing. Because if everything becomes a property and a pointer, then I don't have to worry about changing it. I've never injured my source material. It's always there, sitting on a hard drive somewhere. Um, and yet I get a whole new reference point to it. At the heart of it all, think of a 30-second think of a 30-second clip. Think of say source file main. So let's say that's an MP4 and it's sitting on your phone, and it's a clip and it's 30 seconds long. Starts at one, ends at 30, or zero and ends at 30. Let's say I want to create a derived value of that, a property bag. Well, I'm going to go to my high-level object, media composition and I'm going to create a media clip that will be used in it called main. Now, this is, this is now an object that essentially says, start here at 0, end here at 30. Reference point is this file back on disk. Let's say I'm going to be doing something with that clip. So let me set up a scenario for you. So let's say there is a video of this room and maybe me presenting, and you want to show there's 30 seconds of it. And at about 15 seconds, you want to stop that and you want to insert something else, say somebody in the audience looking with rapt attention at the presentation or sleeping, one or the other, your call. Um, it's editing. You get, to, you get to play around and do what you want. Um, but you want to insert that in the middle, you know, sort of the classic reaction to what's going on. Um, and then you want to show the rest of the other clip. So let's say the scenario is 15 seconds, insert a brand new set of uh, footage that's 10 seconds long, and then another 15 seconds at the end. So started out with this source file main that was 30 seconds. I said, all right. I'm going to take it up here. I'm going to make it a media clip. Um, then, you know what? I need to use it again. So it's also going to be main two. So I'm going to have reference points there before I do any trimming. And then I'm going to have another source file, insert. Let's say that that's, that's that middle 10 or 15 seconds. And then underneath the whole thing, music. This is the heart of the editing system, uh, the APIs. 
uh, when you use this, and I'm going to show you code right after this as to how this all translates out to code. When you use this, you need to think about the media composition as your high-level container that holds all your clips, the clip as your individual units of chunks of video with properties, and then background audio as the soundtrack you can optionally throw underneath. All right. Now let's get to what it looks like as code. So this is stitching three clips together. This is all you need. This is a very, very, very short amount of code. This was our goal was to keep it simple. So let's take a look at it. The very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, I've got two clips already that are sitting on my phone. I've got main and I've got insert. Main's 30 seconds long and insert is, let's say, 10 seconds long. Um, so the first thing I need to do is say, all right, make those media clips. So assume I've already got those. Those are, those are all now media clips. I'm going to need to do this operation, I'm going to need another version of main. So I'm going to clone that. So media clip main2 equals main.clone. So I've got now two 30-second clips, both derived from main. Um, what's cool about this now is that I've never touched the actual main file at all, but I have two defined media clips that are derived from it. Um, but now what I want to do is I want to actually say, all right, I only need 15 seconds from each of these clips. I need the front half. I need the back half. All right, so let's start with what we call trim time from end. So trim time from end and trim time from start are sort of the heart of the API. Uh, these are methods that allow you to basically take a seek point or a time value and actually say, this is where I, from this point on, I am trimming to the end, or from this point on, I'm trimming from the start. So in the first operation, I'm going to trim from main everything after the seek position. Now, I could have done this with a number where we have seek position, but I wanted to be realistic. Seek position is a variable. And that's something that you would have pulled back from the seek position of wherever, say, you scrub to on your UI. So let's say I've set source to a media element, and you know, I'm moving along. You're going to see all this, by the way, um, like because through the, through the miracle of actually planning this presentation, we actually hope to take you through from actually the abstracts to where I actually showed to you in code. Um, you'll actually seek to a point. Um, and you'll say, okay, so I've scrubbed about 15 seconds in, you know, yeah, give me that. Now, in real world, it could be a different value depending on where you landed. Uh, give me that back. Um, and now what I want to do is I want to get rid of everything after the seek position. So I want the first 15 seconds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the original duration and I'm going to subtract the seek position from it. So main trim prime from end, so trim from the end, original duration minus the seek position. So I get, I've now at that 15 seconds, and everything after that beginning is gone. Um, in the second example, I'm doing just the opposite. It's a little bit easier because uh, trim time from start's a little bit simpler. Um, I can say, all right, from the start, my seek position was at 15 seconds. Um, main two, trim time from start equals seek position. Take everything before the seek position and trim it away. So what I'm done with after those first two simple lines of code is the first 15 seconds and last 15 seconds. So, so main now has the first 15 seconds. Main two now has the second 15 seconds. All right, so we stop just for a second and sort of, sort of uh, talk about why this is kind of cool. When we first presented these APIs at the TAP conference um, about um, a couple of months ago, um, we first really snuck it out to sort of the, our early adopters. Um, we, we got to the slide, and this guy put his head down on the desk. And I said, what's wrong? And he said, I wrote 800 lines of code to get to that part. Um, and it's true. If you do that lifting on Media Foundation, if you, if you have to do a, uh, anyone who's actually gone down there and wrestled with that stuff, with uh, source readers and sync writers and the whole nine yards, knows it's not trivial. It's hard work. And our goal was to say, look, video trimming is such a basic operation. It's something you have to do to be even in the game in video editing. I can't make you do that. I've got to give you simple methods for it. And that's what the APIs do. So now you're ready at this point to basically say, look, let's edit some video. I'm going to new up a media composition, our high-level object. Okay, I'm going to call it stitched. So stitched equals new media composition. And then I'm just going to add my clips. It's just simple add operations. Stitch clips dot add main, insert main two. Done. I've got three clips now sitting in a media composition. I can now use that composition to go and perform other operations that are meaningful to your user in your application. So one of them is show it to the user. Show them what they just did before they actually commit to a file. Now, here's where we made a decision in the editing APIs that I think was pretty cool. Um, and I think it's super valuable. We said, look, there are, um, there are scenarios. I want to come over here a little bit, because I'm always talking to these guys, because the monitors are over here. Um, there are scenarios where you guys are going to need 
to actually see things up on the screen in a different resolution than you're going to transcode them out to a file. Why is that? Because you have different levels of hardware, right? So if I've got editing running on a 512 device, which you can do, um, I'm not going to want to preview a 1080 clip at 1080 up on the screen. That's going to be a miserable experience for my customer because my customer is going to go, oh, geez, this, I'm scrubbing, I'm scrubbing, it's so slow, I'm so slow. So we give you two paths, one for transcoding, generate, uh, generate stream source, and generate preview um, media stream source just for preview. So you have the ability to pass a property set and say, look, when I preview this thing, when I set up my media element and I set source and I take my composition stitched and I send it out, I can send it out to preview media stream source and I can tell it to be 640 by 480. That's cool, because now I can say, look, take a look at it in a very performant way. You're seeing all the frames. You're seeing a different resolution, but that's okay. I'm showing you preview. And of course, if you've got the hardware that can support you know, the full-on version of the video, you don't need to do this. But we think this is really important, especially since we're getting into so much low-cost, um, low-memory hardware. And then once I do that, I've sent it out. You're going to see all of this in operation today. All right. Who wants to see some actual editing? I've talked a lot. You want to see it actually happening? I've got like a couple of hands here. Let's actually see it for reals. All right. All right, flip me on over. Okay, so this is a uh, editing application that we wrote on our team. I'm gonna say a couple things about it before I dive in. One is don't ever use RUI. It was done by a bunch of engineers who don't really know UI all that well. It was done to demonstrate the APIs so that we could show you all the operations. You're going to see trimming. You're going to see clip combine. You're going to see us moving clips around. Um, but you, as developers for Microsoft, uh, on Microsoft Platform, can do a much better job than we can with the UI. Um, our goal was to give you a platform, and you could do some cool stuff on it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to add some media. So let's go ahead and let's look for this. All right. Now, came in here uh, earlier to practice. I could have used a whole lot of different videos, and, and I could have shot some cool stuff and whatever, but I thought, you know, it would be kind of more meaningful if I just used this room. So I came in and I shot this room when it was empty. And took a little quick pan across when there was nobody here. And when I was sitting there thinking, it's like, wow, you know, even if like half those chairs get filled, that's a lot of people. Um, in, and even though we got only half the chairs full, it's still a lot of people. It's like, I'm going to have to get up in front of all those people, and I'm going to have to present. So the thing about editing is I can tell a little bit of a story when I actually do this stuff. So I've got my video, and it kind of shows the hall, and it's just me panning. I also wanted to show you the immediacy of, like, here's something I just shot, and right away it's right here in my emulator um, that I, after I moved it into my project. So it was just that quick for me to get stuff in. Um, so the story I'm going to tell is that I got up here, I looked at this empty hall, and I was like, wow, okay. I'm going to be kind of nervous when I'm doing this thing. So I need to go to my happy place. And when I go to my happy place, I think about my kids. So I'm going to have like a flashback right in the middle of my looking across this hallway. And I'm going to insert some video. Now remember, I'm, I'm keeping you on the same path of the demo that we showed before. I'm going to show you a clip. I'm going to break it down. I'm going to throw something in the middle. So let me say that I'm going to edit this. So down below, I've got my cheesy timeline. I call it cheesy because, like, you know, we did it. Um, and you will do much better. Uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to edit that guy. And I can say, you know what? I kind of like where it starts. That's OK. But you know, this whole when it comes and pans back across, uh, that's kind of long. I think maybe I've kind of got the point right about here before I actually see that. Oh, and, and you know what? I've got live scrubbing. So I can just jump wherever I want and pick a point and go, yeah, too much, right about, say, there, and end it there. OK, brand new clip. So basically, trim time from start, trim time from end just did their business. Um, and I basically got myself a shorter clip. So it was only 16 seconds. I'm now down to seven. All right, so right around here, right about the middle, is where I go, oh, I need to go to my happy place. I need to think of something, something different than just being up on this stage and presenting. So let's just cut it into two clips. So now I got two clips where I used to have one. And let's go get some media. All right, so because I've got live preview and real-time scrubbing, I can go right ahead. I could take a look at this clip. This is my daughter, Hope, and you saw her earlier in the birthday photos, and you saw her actually doing these bubbles. So we were on vacation, and she was doing bubbles off the thing. That's pretty cool. Um, I love her dearly, but a little of that goes a long way. So obviously, I want less of it. 
Um, but that's going to be my happy thought. So I'm going to take that, and I'm going to edit it. And let's say it starts to get interesting. I got real-time scrubbing, which is so cool. Let's say it starts to get interesting right about here. And set it in there. And then let her blow bubbles for about, you know, two, three seconds. Let's go back just a little bit. About two, seven, right there. And now I've got an edited clip. And she's blowing bubbles. That's great. So let's go back. And you know what? Let's put it in the middle. So this is, I'm doing now in real time, which you just saw me actually describe to you in code and in the original presentation. Um, what, I've, what I've been able to do now is create a fully edited sequence. So I'm panning across the hallway. I cut away to a new clip. And I'm back to panning across the hallway again. So a couple things happened there. Um, that's an actual demonstration of, the, of, of what you saw me taking you through there. But that's also the first time in public a Windows phone has ever actually performed an edit for the very first time. Um, and we're pretty happy about that. The fact that do you, today is the day we, that this thing uh, is fully real and live and you guys can use it. OK, so one last thing. Whenever I have a flashback or I go to my happy place, it's not in color. It's in black and white. Because you know what? All flashbacks should be in black and white. It's at least in my opinion. So let's do one more thing. Let's go to this clip right here. Let's edit it. Let's put it into grayscale. All right, I'm going to play this right here in, in preview, real time preview. So I applied a black and white filter, and I'm seeing exactly what I wanted to see to the user applied immediately. So black and white, real time effects being applied. Let's go back to the composition. Play it down. And you'll see in the edited master, the black and white's applied. And we're right back out there again. Fully edited sequence, filter applied. All right. That's full feature editing. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to send you over to Jeff. What Jeff is going to do is he is going to show you uh, in Visual Studio exactly what it is, what it takes to actually add trimming to a, uh, a basic trimming application. Um, and he's going to take, take it through you step by step. All right, Jeff, go for it. All right. So here I have a very simple video application I created for this demo. I have the main page up here. This is pretty much the only page of the application. I'm going to quickly go over what we have for the UI. We expect you to create something much better. This is a very simple demonstration. So to start off, we have a media element. And this is what we're going to be using for live preview, similar to what we saw in the media editor app. And we have a slider for adjusting trim time from start to trim the start of the composition, and another slider to adjust the trim time from end. At the bottom of the page, we have two buttons. We have a play pause button and a transcode button. So whatever we preview and what we can see what we have trimmed, we can actually press transcode and immediately save it out to disk. And if we drop into the code, I'll quickly go over what we have here. So at the very top is initialization. We have the onNavigated2 method, and then there's a comment for to do load the video and create the media composition. We'll come back to that in a moment and show how easy it is to load a video and then get it into the media composition to start editing it. We perform some work to adjust the sliders so that they work. Sliders operate with just numbers, but the editing API takes time spans. So I defined the maximum value of the trimmers as the duration of the clip in milliseconds. And then we do some small adjustment on the trim end slider in order to move to the end, since we're actually adjusting the end position of the composition. And then we attach event handlers for when the sliders move so that we can actually run some code and perform the trimming in real time. Then we use the Generate Media Stream Source API, which is not the preview one. I opted to keep it pretty simple here. And we pass it into the media element in order to do preview. A little bit further down, we have initialization for the play pause button. And this makes it so that when you press play, it sticks to the beginning of the media element and starts playing it, and also toggles the button in order to switch to a pause button. And it does something similar for pause. And we have the transcode button, which does some pretty cool stuff, and it's in a surprisingly small amount of code. For transcoding, we 
first create a storage file in the application local folder in order to save the output to. You can also save it to the camera roll or somewhere else. And we're saving it to a file named videooutput.mp4. And if there's any conflicts, it's actually creating a new file so that you can actually transcode out multiple times. Then we do some initialization on the progress bar. So when we're doing the transcode, we're showing feedback immediately. So you can see how far along the transcode is. This isn't that big of a deal for, fa for Smart Remux because it actually transcodes so quickly. But for longer videos or more complex compositions, it becomes really important to show feedback. And we start rendering the file by calling the media composition rendered file async API and passing the storage file that we've just created. And once that's created, it starts transcoding, and we attach a progress handler here. And whenever we get some progress in the transcode, it goes and updates the status bar to show the real-time progress. And a little bit further down, we have some error handling. So if the transcode fails, for whatever reason, it shows a dialog. And if the transcode succeeds, it shows a pop-up offering to play and show the transcoded output. And then down here, we have two <coughs> event handlers for the trim slider. So when you adjust the two sliders, it calls and sees functions, and we can perform our trimming operation. We haven't implemented this yet. We'll come back to it in a moment and see how easy it is to do that. Let's go back to on Navigator 2 and show what it looks <coughs> like to create a media composition. So first, we want to load a storage file in order to create the media clip. So let's load the storage file using the storage APIs. In your application, you can do something more complicated, like open up a picker and let the user choose which video they want to edit. But for our purposes, I have a bubbles.mp4 file bundled inside the application, and it loads directly from there. If you want more information about the improved storage APIs, Sean McKenna has a talk tomorrow at 9 AM, and he'll go into a lot of detail about that. After we create the storage file, we need to create a media clip from it. And it's pretty easy to do this. We use the media clip create from file async API. And this basically goes to the file, gets the metadata from it, so we can actually perform editing. Media Clip itself doesn't have the file in memory, but it has the metadata for it, so it's easier to edit and get data to do your editing. After we have the Media Clip, we need to actually put it into a media composition to perform editing. So let's create a media composition by newing it up, like that. And then we can add the clip to the media composition by adding it to the Eclipse array. And if we run the application now, we should be able to see the video load in the application, but the sliders won't quite be working yet. So we have John's video of his daughter, Hope, here. And I'm hoping that he gets flashbacks and goes to his happy place. So let's play it and preview. So we see the unedited video right now. And we could also transcode out. But I'm not going to do that right now. I'll demonstrate after we have trimming. But if I move around these sliders, you'll see that nothing happens yet, because we haven't hooked those up. Let's drop back into code and implement those sliders. So it's down near the bottom of the file. We have the trim start value changed and trim end value change functions. So first, we want to do trim start. For this, we use the clip, me, media clip trim time from start API. And we take the value of the trim start slider, convert it back from a number into a time span. And we had defined as milliseconds earlier. And this edits the media composition and makes it so that the clip is shorter by trimming off from the beginning of it. But we need to tell the media element that it needs to refresh its view. So we're going to seek on the media element back to the beginning of it in order to refresh and show what we just trimmed to. So while we're dragging the slider around, even though we're only seeking to the beginning, it's going to get a new frame each time because that's the new beginning of the composition. Then similarly for trim end, we are going to use trim time from end and chop off the end of the composition. And we, this API works by having the duration that you want to copy off in seconds from the, begin, from the end of the composition. So we are subtracting from the original duration in order to find how much we want to cut off. And we are also grabbing from the trim in slider in the same way that we were doing it before. And we want to be able to seek to show feedback that we're doing trimming. So let's seek to the end of the composition by using the media element position and seeking to the composition duration. And this will just grab the last frame and show us immediately what it looks like. Let's save and run it and see if it works. So here we have the same app as before. We can play it, but now if we drag these sliders around, it now seeks to different points. This means that the Media clip trim time from start API is actually working since we're only seeking to the same place at the beginning of the composition. And it's getting new frames as I drag around the slider. Let's pick a good start point for this. I like around here when she starts blowing bubbles. 
And now if we use the trim time from in slider, it's showing us the value that we're trimming at in the end of the composition. And find a good point. John pans out here to look at the bubbles. Let's stop right around there. That seems like a good point. And if we press play, we have real-time preview of the media composition that's just been edited. And because we can preview it, we can also transcode it. So let's press transcode. And we have this progress bar on the top of the page. It transcodes really quickly because it's using smart remux. If this was a longer video, it would still be really, really quick, about as fast as a file copy, which is really great. It's a nice addition. And we have this dialog saying that transcode is complete. So let's press play, and we can see our edited, rendered result. And it's just that easy to do editing with the new Windows Media Editing APIs on Windows Phone. John? Yep, thank you. Turn it back on here. Hold on. Am I back on? Thanks. Uh, so first of all, apologies to Jeff, because my cold caught up with me halfway through that, and I had to go backstage and cough. Um, we'll edit that out in the uh, final version of this, because this is all about editing. Um, I really only had uh, one more thing I really wanted to touch on, um, but I did want to just harken back quickly what Jeff was doing, just to sort of hammer home the significance of what he did. Um, in very few lines of code, he showed you, and you know, he had a slider for each of the methods, trim time from end, trim time from start. Everything that we've been talking about today, just how simple it was to go and cut that video down, smart remux it out, and actually transcode it out and preview it up to the screen. So you saw the whole thing end to end. The app I showed you had even more of the stuff. All of this is available for you to build, build in editing. I want to talk a little bit about um, MFT effects because I know it's a question that comes up and the extensibility. Um, one of the key things that's happening with the release of Windows Phone Blue is that we're opening up on the phone this uh, Media Foundation to pretty much the same level as Media Foundation has opened up on a Windows application. So you have, it's there. Um, Media Foundation programming is not trivial. Um, it's actually pretty hard stuff. Um, that's one of the reasons why uh, we're sort of on a crusade to create these high-level APIs that make some of the cooler media functions happen very quickly for you because we know as an app developer um, your time is limited. So uh, to the extent that you have to dive in and do this stuff by hand, it's much easier for you to use a simple API set. Um, however, it's there. It gives you the ability to do the custom filters and you can do some audio transforms and you can add those in. Uh, that's pretty much it. Um, that's the uh, story of windows.media.editing. Um, we've got uh, some time for questions. And I also think we're supposed to give away a pair of headsets. Um, I'm supposed to ask you a question. Um, and if whoever answers the question correctly, the quickest, gets a pair of headsets. So I could ask a question about the APIs, but I thought this might be a little more fun. What's the name of my dog? Back there? Violet. The name of the dog is Violet. Come get some headsets. <laughs> all right. First applause all day. I know, right? <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, come on. Uh, questions? Yes. Um, <laughs> is there a possibility to do um, uh, change the the playback speed when you're doing these these transcodes, or change it to go from backwards to forward, or is that uh, not part of the API. Oh, like a slow motion effect. Slow motion, yes, exactly. So if you want to do like a political commercial, which are all <laughs> slow motion. <laughs> and in black and white. Yeah, exactly. With scary piano music. Yeah. Um, so uh, what we do support, which is being shipped, is the high frame rate. Uh, yeah, we have a slow motion effect. Yeah, so slow motion is supported. It's one of the few effects that we have bundled in right now, and you can use that to slow down or speed up a video. That's right. And, and are all videos one after another linear, or can you do like an HDR by putting two videos superimposed? So you're talking, talking like a dissolve or a wipe or something like that? Yes. Yeah, we don't have time-based effects yet. Okay. Um, that's, on, that's one of the things we, we desperately were hoping to sort of get in in this quick year release we didn't quite get to. And so when we prioritized around short form, we realized that when you're in a short form video world of like a minute or less, you have less time for things like dissolves and wipes, so that was we figured put that at the end of our, our uh, agenda. But we want to get there. Um, there's a team spun up to work on that right now. So yeah, this is this is fantastic. This is I've I've cool. written I've written a Windows Store app and did the Media Foundation stuff, and it is a bear, as you say. So this is just lets me throw away a bunch of code that I spent a lot of time on. So great guys. All right, thank you so much. I should have saved those headsets for you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, make sure you like if, for those kind of testimonials. I'd love if you could like uh, give us some contact info. 
Because we love that kind of stuff. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I noticed in the samples that there was a little drop down of effects that you had in the sample, and also you mentioned that MFTs are really hard to write, and also Microsoft are open sourcing a lot of stuff. So I was wondering if the, if it's possible to retrieve the code for some of the sample effects that you had in the in the sample, or is that uh, a no go? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, grayscale and some uh, other. Would, would other we make ones. would we make our grayscale effect available? Yeah, yeah. Um, we're looking at chunks of things to make available. I think probably what we'll do first is um, the team that's now working on that is probably going to take a look at at uh, actually getting a basic shared library out, which would include things like that. Um, I think Jeff did a little yeah, bit of work on we're that. We're working on that, and we're going to try to release it sooner so that you can use it immediately with these APIs. The library's good, the binary, but if you know, for learning how to do this, you know, having yeah, a the source. effects in yeah. that app. Uh, are basically diagnostic ones, and they're scrounged from various sources, like existing samples. I believe the grayscale effect was already released as part of another effect sample, okay. and we combined it together. Ideally, you want to be writing it using Direct3D yep. in order to get the best performance, and a lot of these are varying levels of fast. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And just as an overall, um, some are pretty slow. <clears throat> A lot of the code that was done around this project, we're taking a look at how we're going to release that out through MSDN. Like Jeff's uh, sample should be released out through MSDN. The other app is kind of a mess, to be frank, because it was our team app that we all sort of messed around in. So we're looking at how we're going to grab chunks of that and somehow share it out uh, as code samples. But go ahead. Oh, let's go to this side. I'm sorry. We had two, two from this side. Let's go over to this side. Hey, guys. Uh, Lance from Boston. First, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I've had uh, an app in the store since, I think, Mango. But my main question, though, is, you know, I have a lot of users every day who say video, the old format, it's MP4. Will there be any problems with them when I do update, you know, AppX? Will they have any problems using that old stored video? Um, I don't think so. Is it MP4 ACC? Yeah. You should be fine. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We, our goal was to support what the camera shot, and the phone camera shoots MP4 ACC. Yes, yep. you should be good to go for Mango. Um, you said previously that there were no time-based effects, and I was wondering whether you could do transitions when you're cutting video. So oh, like yeah, that was, the, that was the question we got over here. We didn't get to uh, time-based transitions yeah. in this release. We didn't get to, like, wipes and dissolves. Um, and as, as a former video editor, that pained me. Um, yeah. But I realized they're, they're used less in short form. And the second question is that uh, you have support for still images. Can we do overlays? Oh, good, great question. Uh, overlays is, is essentially the same. Um, it, so I'm going to give you an interesting answer here. So in the API set, no. Um, that's not there yet. We would need to give you that AB, that sort of AB support like we would for a dissolve, do the yeah. same thing. However, because there's still images and because Media Foundation is open, you could roll an MFT because there's still images that actually did an interpolation yeah. for still images on your own and actually support it inside an application now. You'd have to do that work on, MF, on, on Media Foundation. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Yep. Uh, uh, back to this side. Okay. Are you able to edit the audio track and video track separately? Ah, we do not. So on a media clip, we do not split the audio track off for, for discrete audio track editing so right you, now. You, so, so you can sort of do a, a cutaway. Um, I, I know what you're saying. It's like leave, leave. I know exactly what you want. You want to, you want to, I want to. We used to call it an L cut years ago. I want to run the video and I want no to just drop a chunk of video. I want to pull a chunk of video only out and show you reacting and leave the video and leave the audio underneath. You can yeah. do that with the background audio API. You right. can take off the audio track and add it as background audio in order to have that same effect. Right. So that's how the API supports that. Okay. And that was another reason why we put the background audio in because we were thinking about that scenario. Yeah, that's the classic new scenario. So is this uh, API limited to Windows Phone? It's not available on desktop or tablets? Great question. I was waiting for that. I thought that usually comes like the, that's usually the first question we get. So good news, bad news. So one of the challenges of the new Microsoft, where we're merging everything together, is that for the first time, we're going to have a unified release uh, next time we go out. Uh, Windows, Windows Phone, everybody's going to go pretty much at the same time. Um, prior to that, we had staggered releases as each group did their thing. So when Windows released 8.1, um, we were still working on Phone 8. Um, I actually came out of the phone organization. Um, we're all Windows now. Um, so the actual release points were not fully in sync. So that meant that it was hard for us to make sure that stuff got into each release vehicle. So that's the bad news, is the fact that um, as of right now, it's not on the Windows platform. Here's the good news. 
when we started the journey for this API set, we said, look, we know that the releases are out of sync, but we can't be out of sync with our code. So we wrote this as a WinRT API. So from the ground up, this is supposed to be converged. There was, we, did, we did nothing in here that was one off for phone. Um, we, we did this to be a fully converged API so it would be easily brought back over to Windows. We did a few tweaks here and there that all had to be reconciled, but we worked on top of Media Foundation. Um, and really the only thing that stopped us <coughs> from getting into uh, an earlier update was just pure time. Um, so, so the answer is, is no now, but yes eventually. They were, they were built to be converged. So eventually, that's why I said before, maybe someday on your tablet, yes. So we, we definitely want these over on, on, on the full size, on full Windows and desktop. Okay, thanks. Yep. Uh, two questions. The first one is actually a little further than that. Um, is there any chance this is ever going to end up on desktop stuff? So yes. Yeah, yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's the goal. We wrote it to be converged. So we want uh, probably by the end of our next release, I don't have timing on that, it should be there. If we can get it there sooner, we will. Not just Windows runtime, but you could do, write a desktop application with this? It's full WinRT API. So um, that's a great question. I would think I would still be able to access it through a desktop app as well. OK. Yeah. All right. Um, the second question was, uh, I don't remember, I don't think you talked about it, but is, uh, is this, does this run on hardware? You know, does it take advantage of the GPU? Or yes, it does. There, it does. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, we, we did a lot of work to, um, to make sure that when you transcode, you're always on the hardware path, um, especially when you write the files out. OK, great. So if you have an MFT, you know, you make sure you support the hardware, work off of that, and it should just come in and go out on the same path, right? Yep. Yep. OK, awesome. Thanks. Yep. Hi. Uh, can your app access and uh, edit videos uh, from the camera roll, from the user's camera roll? Oh, great question. <clears throat> so the API itself doesn't actually address that, but the known folder API that was brought over from Windows as part of this release um, that you may hear about, there's a, I think you talked about Sean's. Yeah, Sean has a talk tomorrow. Tomorrow on, on storage. The short answer is yes. Yeah, you okay. can load files from yeah. the camera roll. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was going roundabout. I should have just said, yeah, you can. Yeah. Because we did, we, we picked up the whole known folder architecture on the phone so that we have the ability to look at all the folders now. So, um, you're, so I, I know you're paying. You're, you're not in the world anymore where the camera roll is the province of Nokia and everybody else. Um, right, exactly. The, the th third party developer can get there too now. Thank you. Yep. I had a question about uh, resolution. Mm -hmm. So, a couple parts on this. Um, so when you guys are trimming videos together, what happens if they're shot at different aspect ratios or different resolutions? Oh, yeah. And also, do you support outputting uh, like a one by one, you know, something for like Instagram or something like that, where your source is 16 by nine? Great so, question. You want to start with the resolutions? For the resolutions, we have, that's part of the reason why we have the Generate Preview Media Stream Source API, so that if you actually preview, you can choose the size you want to render out to, we resize them all to the same. But when you call render to file it async, yeah. it, I think that's the one. Yep. It chooses the highest resolution file and uses that as the output resolution. So if you have a 1080p video and you stitch it with a 480p, it'll scale everything up and letterbox anything that doesn't follow the aspect ratio. Yeah. And there's a different API where you can choose specifically what you want to output. You can choose the exact encoding profile and get that. We had long conversations about resolution leveling when yeah. we were doing this, about you know, what the, the whole, we sat down for like days, it's like what happens with when you put a 480 and a 1080 in the same thing. And we, we went back and forth and for a while we were thinking about um, uh, longest, longest clip would win. We thought, well that kind of sucks if I have a 1080p clip in there. I, I, it, was, it was what with highest. Yeah. So you have the ability to go in and, and tweak that. Okay. Yep. Oh, an aspect ratio. So that's, that's, a more, that's under your control. Um, that's the one we letterbox. Yeah. But you get to choose which resolution you render it to, and it letterboxes anything that aren't exactly that aspect ratio. Cool. Great question. Hi. Uh, how about external camera formats, such as AVC, HD, or the GoPro style formats? Also, will this be supported? So that's a great question. So um, <clears throat> for this release, we looked at and said our primary number one objective is going to be to support what I shoot on the phone. So we stuck with MP4 AECC. So if it's that format, it's there. Because it's built into the hardware, because um, it's, there's the, the Microsoft Media Foundation, we also end up supporting WMV, which I know is not a hugely popular format. Um, but it's there. So those are the two we've got right now. Um, for the next release we're looking at, uh, this is great feedback. Let us know what you guys think would be there. Our first target was not to, to support side-loaded video, stuff that did not originate on the device. Exactly. Exactly. And so that's all, that's all now 
being looked at in the next release, and we know that that's a, that's a requirement. So what we'll probably do is, um, I know the team that's, that's looking at this right now, what we'll probably do is they'll probably do an exercise in terms of um, what's popular. And so they'll work through the popular formats. Just one more sure, go for or, or comment. Uh, think about stabilization of video, yeah? Because you know all the videos are shaky. Uh, if you do not have such a good camera with optical stabilization, etc., so it would be really cool to stabilize it. I know this is part of the uh, MFT. Or, or of yes, the, yes, it is. But, but it does not really work. <laughs> up until so. the, up until the eleventh hour of this release, we had video stabilization in our sites. And it didn't make it in the final last round. So um, what I can tell you is that you probably are not going to have to wait an entire release for video stabilization. It's probably going to be happening in some kind of an update. We were that close on video stabilization. Because we, like you said, we had an existing MFT for it. Yeah, so. Yep. Yeah, it was a fa I, I got to say, you know, for a year, we, we worked on this for a year, where there was no editing platform when we started. And this is what we ended up with. I'm pretty happy because we kind of got on the beach in a big way um, for, the, you know, for our first release. So. We all type office hours at 5.32. Yes. If you, need, yeah, if you want it, we can uh, go ahead and meet you guys later on in our office hours. Go ahead. Hi. Um, for sort of aiding in uh, really fast editing, I think that providing some sort of tools that make it easier for consumers to edit would be great in this. Mm -hmm. So automatically finding cut points, um, finding places in the music to automatically cut. Are you guys considering tools like that to give through the API to be able to make more sort of um, automatic or automatic type editing? That's a great question for, um, in my, so I don't want to speak for the teams that are looking at this right now and they're looking at that, but there's a, um, um, uh, people will be looking at that sort of stuff as to like how, how sort of the capture stuff ties into the editing stuff. Um, so, um, Keep your eye on that. It's something we've thought about. I know, we, I know internally we've had discussions about you know, how cool would it be to do, um, we look at things like Google Auto Awesome and that kind of stuff where people are, are, uh, are doing that kind of, you know, like say pie in the sky scenarios like I have facial recognition filters and I just make sure I have just clips of you, that kind of stuff. People are, are thinking about that kind of stuff. I can't give you time frames or any of that kind of stuff, but it's, it's something that we've thought about. Okay, yeah. anybody else? Well, it was a small group, but it was a great group because you guys had like awesome questions. Those were like some of the best questions I've ever gotten on this topic. So, um, you know, kudos to you. Um, is there anything else anybody wants to uh, ask about? All right, go out and make some editing applications. You know, if I get like half you guys build an editing application and feedback and feedback. Oh my gosh, do not forget. Remember, this was the only sp the only talk that gave you free candy. No, it didn't, no, I, just, I just made that up. 